Hello and welcome to Crucible of Words for more dedicated legacy action. Today, we are smallpoxing it up, which is always a deck that a lot of people enjoy. Not necessarily the best position deck at the moment, but I did see this list that managed to put up a 5-0, so I thought we'd give it a go because I know how much you people love a bit of the old pox. So, here is a titular card of the deck. Smallpox, each player loses one life, discards a card, sacrifices a creature, and sacrifices a land. So this is a symmetrical effect, so we need to find ways of breaking that parity. So Orcish Bowmasters is two creatures in one card, and we don't really care that much about the bonus creature, so that's something we can sack to it. Things like Retrofit's Foundry, this can pump out a load of tokens, so we don't really care what's going on here. If we keep creatures as land, so our Mishra's Factory is a land that can become a creature, so we've not got that many things to sacrifice to it. That's kind of the jazz. But there is one card here that I definitely need to pull your attention to. Lord Skitter, Sewer King. So this is a 3-mana three 3-3. Three, three. Whenever another rat enters a battlefield under your control, exile up to one target card from an opponent's graveyard. At the beginning of combat on your turn, create a 1-1 one, one black rat token with this creature that can't block. So this will give us loads of excess creatures to sacrifice a smallpox every time we'll get another one. But the actual ability to exile your opponent's graveyard is really useful in the format right now. So many decks are using the graveyard, so this is quite an exciting one to do. But obviously, we're not just a smallpox deck. You know, we, we're not going to draw this every game. We're not going to cast it every game. We've got to do other things with our deck. And we've got a lot of other things to do. We've got classic Liliana of the Veil. It's seen better days, but if you're trying to deny your opponent's resources, this is quite a good way of sort of grinding them out of the game. We've got a Dark Ritual to help power this out, which can also power out our beautiful little Lord Skidder. Like I said, we've got some Bowmasters, which is just a great card in Legacy right now. We've got a lot of removal in here. So we've got Fatal Push, Innocent Blood, and Shoulder's Edict. So we are trying to keep the board relatively clean. We've got some Thought Seizes to attack our opponent's hand. We've got this Khan the Great Creator package. We've got like a Crypt, a Torpor Orb, Pith and Needle, Snaring Bridge, Lattice, Liquid Melt Coating. So we've got, you know, just ways of winning the game with like the, the Coating and the Lattice via the Khan. So we can do that whole plan. We are an Urza Saga deck, although we only have two Urza Saga because we have quite a lot of black pips in our costs. But Urza Saga is a thing that we can use to get some creatures when we're on relatively low resources. Just, you know, pump some stuff out here, then get ourselves some Graveyard Hay or a Currency Convert, which is obviously excellent with things like Liliana. Or Retrofit's Foundry, just start pumping out some more tokens. We've got that whole plan too. And if we can get our Crucible of Worlds, we can start bringing back our Urza Sagas and get more value out of them. Obviously, we also have things like Cabal Pit, which is an unusual one that we can use to blow some creatures up. We've also got a full set of Wastelands here because we are trying to deny our opponent's resources. So you kind of see that theme a lot, right? We're trying to deny resources here and here. And with our, like, hand disruption, creature removal, we're just trying to strip away our opponent's things and win with whatever's left. So we're a sort of a different approach to a control deck. We're not necessarily trying to answer their things one for one and then gas back up we're just trying to suck the life out of the game which is what pox loves to do and you know you do get a few free wins off of just land destruction type stuff and this deck really leans into that we've also got uh, a bridge and a khan silex if you haven't seen this one players can't pay life to cast spells or activate abilities that aren't mana abilities pay x tap it destroy each non-land permanent of mana value x or less so it's kind of like our own little pernicious deed so this is hopefully going to be able to answer some of our opponents things that might be ruining our day things like Urza Saga or just a bunch of permanents that Black normally struggles to deal with it's interesting that these are in the main um, rather than the sideboard but they've got to go somewhere and it's not my list somebody 5-0'd with it so here we are really sideboard wise aside from the Khan package we've got a little bit of removal we've got some plague engineers some work against goblins an opposition agent and some more graveyard hate because you know you need a lot of graveyard hate in the format right now we're only running three Urborgs. They can turn these into black mana. But we should be okay with the, the land count we've got here. We also have one Gaia Reach Sanitarium. What this does, each player draws a card, then discards a card. Not necessarily something we're a big fan of, but we can break the parity of this. So you'll, you'll see the theme of breaking the parity quite a lot here. So we can break the parity with Orcish Bowmaster, so we get a free ping, or Currency Converter, so we discard a card, but then we get that value immediately. And yeah, that's pretty much what we're doing here. The Pox community for Legacy is a very enthusiastic community who put a lot of work into Pox, even when it's not necessarily lining up well in the format. So it's always nice to make some content for those lovely people. And they do have a Discord. If you just uh, Google it, you can find it quite easily. 
Uh, if you like this sort of thing, by all means, check them out. And while you're here, why not drop me a like and a subscribe, because that helps me. Okay, let's pock some people right in the heart. If you're looking to play Legacy on MTGO like me, why not try Card Hoarder? They're a rental service that I personally use, and I found them better than other rental services that I've used in the past. So why not give them a try? We are on the play for game one. What does our hand do? We kill a thing. We make a Liliana. Like, if we're against a creature matchup, this hand is fine. If we're not against a creature matchup and a combo matchup, then we're probably going to have a hard time, and that's life sometimes. So we can just lead off with a swamp. We don't have the most amount of ways of triggering the revolt for the fatal push. Like, we've got wastelands. And as a saga, we can sort of try and time our effects around that, perhaps. But otherwise, it can be a little bit tricky sometimes. Because we're not, we're not playing like a fetch land mana base or anything like that. All right, what is our opponent up to? An ancient tomb. So our fail push might not be the most useful here. A patchwork automaton. Okay. So we will have some answers for this as time goes by. What are we looking at here? I am okay to thoughts is our opponent. Trying to take the next threat so that we can just Liliana and get rid of this. So another patchwork and a Sir Ginger. What does Sir Ginger have? Uh, hexproof haste as long as the opponent controls a planeswalker. So we're going to be controlling a planeswalker soon. So we don't want that to come down. We don't really want the Emery to come down either. The Emery is harder for us to answer than the others. Yeah, our opponent's hand is real good. I guess we take the Emery here. We can't pay for the ward for this now, but if they play a Sir Ginger, then we can at least kill that with our Fatal Push. Another Patchwork, that's probably the one I would play there too. So we can kill the first Patchwork using the Fatal Push, and then minus the Liliana to get the next one. Does this change anything? I think we're probably playing out the Mistress Factory here. So we can pay three mana here, we can just clear their board. The problem with that is, Sir Ginger is actually going to be pretty good because it's going to have Trample, Hexproof, and Haste. So it's just going to immediately clean up our Liliana. So I think the plan here is just to hit this patchwork, pay the ward. That seems reasonable. All right. Yeah, the, uh, the flavor text of Sir Ginger, basically, the... <laughs> if you've got a Planeswalker, it does some stuff. It's actually going to come up and be really good here, which is kind of annoying for us. There's also going to be some Urza Saga tokens getting in our business. Urza Saga is traditionally a card that the Pox decks struggle against. Like, if you don't have your land destruction of, like, Wastelands or whatever on time, then this is just going to give them a bunch of creatures, and then our sort of Edict effects become worse, and all that sort of jazz. Um... Like, we can play this Liliana. It's going to supercharge their Ginger. But it is still an Edict effect. And I think it's worth getting rid of one of their creatures. Because we're going to have to work through them. Yeah, this doesn't feel like a particularly friendly matchup for your neighbourhood Pox player. Lots of card advantage to get round of our, like, sort of one-for-one -one grinding removal. Wow, they didn't get rid of the patchwork. That's really interesting. Maybe because we're holding up the black mana, they're expecting something like a fatal push that could clean up the construct but can't clean up the patchwork. But that saves us a bunch of damage, so I'll take that. Not going to have a great time with Sir Ginger here, though. But on the other side, it's, it's nice to actually see that line of text be relevant for once. It certainly hasn't been the times I've played it. There is a Shadow Spear. All right, another Urza Saga. All right, we're going to get stompied pretty hard here. Yep, they're going for the Sir Ginger. It pumps the patchwork and it gives them a hasty threat so they can crash for quite a bunch here. So we're going to lose the Liliana. We're quite a long ways off of the threshold we need to use this as a removal spell. Yep, by all means, goodbye Liliana. Okay, so how are we going to get rid of all of these things? Khan's Silex is pretty much the best thing we can draw, I think, here. That one is not a Khan's Silex, is it? So, all right, we're going to Dark Ritual here. Get ourselves a Liliana. Get ourselves a Minus. And we can dump out this Crucible. And then we can try and do some blocking. They got rid of their thing again. Okay, so when the guy dies, they do get some abilities here. This is when an artifact you control is put into the battlefield. You get a plus one, plus one counter and a scry. All right. We are quite a ways off of stabilizing here. 
And I don't think we're going to get there. But we can start putting this mistress factory in front of stuff and it can be a 3-3. So that might be able to do something. This doesn't have first strike, does it? Uh, trample, hex proof, haste. Okay, so it doesn't have first strike. So I can put the shadow spear here. If you want to, okay, another patchwork. That's pretty good too. I don't know how I'm supposed to win this one. I think if we, we take one more draw, if it's Khan's Silex, then we might still be dead, right? Depending on how they're distributing their damage here. They're going straight for the face. Okay, so I don't think Khan's Silex is an out anymore. Look, it doesn't matter anyway. Okay, we got clowned pretty hard there. We don't have any, like, the big haymakers you would want for this matchup, like the null rod type effects. That's a little bit awkward. Um, Opposition Agent is reasonable against things like as a saga the snuff out can kill a bunch of their guys plague engineer can at least trade in combat with stuff the force of despair is not really where i want to be but it's fine uh, do you want any of these things i don't think so and stone bridge is fine crucible is fine so what is looking bad so the khan is going to be a bit like an old but it's a bit slow to get off the ground um fatal push good innocent blood good i don't think we want the thought seizers i think we just want removal spells Right, we're going to go with this. Like, you can bring in things like Leyline, but I don't think that's where you want to be. Like, it can stop the Emery, but we're just trying to remove their things. So, again, this is a hand that is fine, but not amazing. But I think we're still on it. So, I think we keep this. So, we can use this currency converter to get some extra creatures on board. So, when we discard non-lands to it, it makes two twos. So, hopefully, we can use those two twos to get in the way of some of their stompy things before they get a little bit out of hand so if they play something like a turn one emery it's going to be very hard for us to kill that with a fatal push but if they play like a turn one patchwork yep that's going to be pretty good too have you got any zeros to follow it up with they do okay so we need them to not play a creature or at least play a creature we can kill on turn two because that way we'll be able to use our fatal push untap liliana take out their patchwork and as long as we can dodge something like a, a Saga, we might be in an okay spot. But our opponent's obviously got a grip full of cards. Smallpox, you say? Well, I didn't come here to not cast Smallpox, that's for sure. Alright, this resolving would be pretty good. If our opponent's got a Force, this is definitely going to meet it. Alright, there is the Force. Okay. Right, if we got to do that, we could take out their Tomb and their Patchwork. And one of their cards are manned. And we basically don't really lose that much for it. There's a seat. We're looking at another creature. A thought cast. Okay. If they can not play a creature here, that would help us out a bunch. Alright. If they're just scaling up their patchwork, that's obviously, like, good. But we have an answer for their patchwork. And they've already burned through one of their forces. And obviously a blue card, because there's a limited amount of blue cards they have in their very colourless deck. Alright, we might have dodged a creature here unless there's a second main phase Emery. Alright, so our opponent does get to draw some cards. This could find them some more counter magic. But we have two options here. We have play the Liliana, kill this, have something on board to start working with. Or we have the Fatal Push. I think we're just going to get this Liliana going. Like our opponent doesn't play Soft Permission apart from Metallic Rebuke is the only thing they might play. But Metallic Rebuke isn't the thing they can cast here. So there's, there's no like days force spike type stuff it's it's going to be hard counters like force of negation or force of will all right we're gonna get surge injured again all right so there's one of the things we did not want to see if we could find a wasteland on our next turn that would help us out a bunch uh x equals one okay we've got a good card to discard to our liliana thought cast yep this is the problem we traded some stuff backwards and forwards but our opponents just got resources still all right. A Plague Engineer isn't the worst, is it? What do we name? If we name Construct, it's going to shrink us a little bit, but that's not the most exciting thing. What is a Patchwork Automaton? That is a Construct, so we can stop these ever having text. I can't remember what Sir Ginger is. But, all right, we're going to plus this. We're going to bit off our Fatal Push here, because we can't cast underneath the Chalice anyway. And we will put it underneath the Converter. I think I'm going to play a basic swamp. And we're going to get our Plague Engineer down. 
We'll name Construct so they can't play Apaches and grow it up. So if we can get Hellbent and just start cranking this Liliana. Like, we do have another Edict available in our Lily, but we won't be able to Edict their Saga because they're going to make it end step anyway. But we can deploy a 2-2 here off of our Currency Converter, which isn't nothing. We're in a pretty reasonable spot to find a Khan. Right, nothing else from our opponent yet. Let's get rid of this Fatal Push underneath it and get ourselves a Rogue. A Dark Ritual. Um, I guess we're casting it. So we play this. Cast the Dark Ritual. And why am we casting that? Yeah, that was a... Not a great one there. Like, we don't want it in our hand because we're activating the Lockthwain. But... We, we don't have the mana to activate the currency. Actually, that's fine. I think that was actually the right play. Because we'd rather draw a real card here. If we had another mana, then that, obviously that would have been less than ideal. So this is going to be, what, one, two, three, four, five, and it's going to be bigger when it attacks us next. I guess we could have activated the Liliana and put it underneath the currency. What am I talking about? That would have been way better. It's almost like I don't play a lot of Liliana of the Veil vale in 2024. Or currency converter. Okay. So they are taking some damage off of this Ancient Tomb. But we're not really like a deck that's going to be racing our opponent. We're just kind of trying to grind them down and then win with what's left. But our opponent's got just so difficult to grind down. Alright, what scary thing will our opponent have here? We should have an extra rogue on this board, but we played that Dark Ritual like an, like an absolute clown. I wanted to get out my hand. I should have stopped for a second. Just put it into the converter. Alright. What horrors beyond our wildest comprehension are we going to see out of this Urza Saga? Okay, Shadow Spear, that's not unexpected. That allows them to trample over and potentially kill our Liliana. Right, so that's seven. So we can block four and our guy will still die. Let's see where this goes. Coming to the lead. So this is definitely going to kill the Liliana. We just have to decide, would we like to trade? I think we would like to trade here. Using our Death Touch. Because this means that things like um, Smallpox can actually clean up their creature. Not Innocent Blood because of the Chalice. Alright, another Liliana is good here. Let's see what we find. An Innocent Blood. Okay, that's not one we want here. So I think we will use this. Right, we'll get rid of this Innocent Blood. And we will put it underneath the Converter for next time. Let's play out this as a Saga. All right, we've got this Orcish Bowmasters. We have the mana to ping down a Sir Ginger or a Patchwork Automaton using our Bowmaster, which I'm pretty okay about. I think we do have to take this hit, though, as much as I am unhappy about that. An Emery, okay. That's not really our friend. We'll cast a Thought Cast or something to help us out. Um, so, are we playing this Bowmasters? I think we want our mana next turn. So, we are going to cast this Bowmasters now. It is not great. And our opponent has successfully gone above 20 life. Force of Despair. That's a pretty terrible card, isn't it? Mm. So, we can cycle this away. Or we can make a 2-2 Rogue. Make 2 2 rogue plus this. We end up with 4, 5, 6 power. 7, 8. That is enough to trade into this. The problem with that is that our opponent has this Emery in play. And that's going to be a bit of a toughie. Yeah, I don't think we have what anyone would describe as good options here. Khan Selex comes into play tapped, by the way. Okay, so there's a Patchwork Automaton. So this Force of Despair will get to kill something. Okay, we get to kill two things. Now it's looking a little bit better. Sure, you can scale up your boys. They've got one card in hand. Alright, so we haven't put any creatures into play, so none of our things are going to die. Um, if we cast this now, that shrinks this to seven. So now we can make this. We can make this. And go to blocks. Two. Four. Six. Seven, eight. And now if we can find a smallpox, 
or Liliana, we can clean up this Emery, and we're in a good spot. So we're kind of going there. Now, our opponent's got a big life total, a lot of card draw in their deck. There's a multitude of ways that they can just get back into this game. Just like slam a cap cannon here right into our chops. Kind of uh, really missing that extra 2-2 we could have had. Okay. And life total is whatever at this point. So it's all right. good to just use that too. Okay, what does that do for us? Um, if we activate our Reza Saga, we don't get our Khan. Is this game about Khan? Yes, I think it is. Um, what do we want here? Is it Retrofitters? Or is it the spell bomb? Spell bomb in the on face, uh, in the face up Emery is probably where I want to be here. So we'll get this, then we'll cast this. So we can get rid of this chalice and turn back our one drops and just insulate our Khan from damage a little bit. That seems fine. We can activate our Nile spell bomb to draw a card. We can maybe turtle up behind. In Snaring Bridge, but our opponent will have an Ottawara at some point. Somehow, we are in this one. He's going to attack Khan with, our, with their Emery. They are. Right, I think we are in block mode here. Just preserve the loyalty counters on the Khan. And there's a Saga. That's not amazing news for us. So we can cycle a card from the top into our currency converter. Or we can draw a card with our Spell Bomb. That kind of turns the Emery on, but does give us a card. I think we're just going to cycle with the Currency Converter. If it's an artifact we really want, we can exile it in the Currency Converter and then cast it using the card. Which is a weird play you don't see very often, but... I think just getting the value here. Two mana to make a treasure or a 2-2 two -two down the line is going to be worth it. Alright, we'll discard this wasteland that I really wanted. <laughs> okay. Of course it was that. There is an Urborg. Let's go fishing with this Khan. So we can get ourselves a Microsynth Lattice here. Put the Lattice lock in. And then try and draw something to deal with this Emery. Alternatively, we can get the bridge and hide behind the bridge. I think I want the Lattice here. One, two, three, four five oh, let's uh, do this properly play this keep this one let's play this lattice out okay so they're going to hit our card down to one and then we've got two cards to try and find something one from our null spell one one from draw step we can go into the castle locked rain as well i think at end step we need to fire off the treasure and spell bomb here I'm just going to attack the Khan. We're close. Just need to be able to remove one creature. Right, let's make this treasure. We'll do this at end step in case we need to use our currency converter with something next turn. Let's do this. Get ourselves a card. Norkish Bowmasters. Okay, that's something. Smallpox, that's also something. So let's get rid of this as a saga. We don't want them tutoring anything into play. We'll fire this in. Oh god, I hate trying to resolve things. And uh <laughs> like I said last. We'll do this now. And then we'll cast the smallpox and we can get rid of our token. That should be the game. Our opponent doesn't get to cast spells anymore. Alright. We got there. The power of Khan. It was kind of like our null rod piece in some respects. And I think we're just gonna go in with it at, with it as it is now. I think we're a lot worse off on the draw. Like our one drops can get shut off as early as turn one due to the chalice. They can play a big threat that we'll be behind trying to answer. Yeah. Like we knew we'd be up against it a little bit with uh, Pox. That's the fun, isn't it? Everyone loves an underdog, myself included. All right. Uh, yeah. We have removal spell, removal spell, removal spell. Another removal spell. This seems. Like what I want. This is where they chalice on one. Okay. And there's a saga. We're not great against the old saga there. 
Um, we could just start Lilianaing our opponent out. Just extracting a wealth of cards from them. There is that option. There is also the option to retrofit as Foundry and just get this chugging along. I'm not convinced that's where I want to be. We could Dark Ritual Smallpox. That feels a little sketchy too. All right, we're going to Dark Ritual into Liliana. It's playing magic like it's a very different year. <laughs> okay, so what are we actually getting rid of here? Like Innocent Blood is a very clean answer to what our opponent's got going on. But we also have the Smallpox. Am I okay with casting a Smallpox? Um, it is a lot of stuff we can drain from our opponent and then just get this Liliana to finish the game off. I think I'm going to bin this Innocent Blood. It's more likely to get caught under a Chalice. And if we can get the Retrofit's Foundry, that will just give us some purchase into the game. Okay, so our opponent's almost certainly going to play an Ancient Tomb. Okay. And a Bauble. And a Bauble. So we've got some options here. I'm going to try and clean up this Saga with like a Shoulders Edict. If we cast a Smallpox, we stop them from making a second token. They can float the mana in response and then we can just kill it with the Liliana. That sounds alright to me. A Wasteland would be what I would really like to see here. So we're definitely playing a Swamp. If we cast a Smallpox here, what does that do for us? Hmm. It's not an ideal one, is it? Alright. Cast a Smallpox, we do take them off of tokens. Because they're not going to have the mana. If they make the, so they're not going to make the thing here. They're going to float and then decide what they want to do. Let this dissolve and then spend the mana. Yep. So probably binning the Ancient Tomb here. So what are we binning? It's probably the land. No, we're about to smallpox lose a land. So we can't really bin the land. Does that mean we can't get rid of the retrofitters? We kind of need the retrofitters. Or do we want this removal spell in this Shoulders Edict? That's a tough call. I think I want the removal spell. Maybe I'm a coward. All right, so our opponent's going to make this token now. And we're going to eat it away with the Liliana as we drew it up. And then it's our opponent's turn. They might get a Pithing Needle and just shut down our Liliana. They could get some mana production, like Lotus Petal type stuff. So we've survived some number of threats coming out of that thing. Yep, so there's the Pithing Needle. So we tried to get the value out of the Lily while we could. We've got the next threat answered. We can potentially deal with the Pithing Needle down the line with a Silex. But there's only one of those in our deck. Yuck, that's a pretty good recovery from all that nonsense we just had to do. An Emery. Okay, so this is a creature we can answer. Like, we have to answer this. It's just too good on this board. What have you got for us? Another Liliana, not the one. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. Goodbye, Emery, hopefully. This is worth Force of Willing to protect. Alright, our opponent agrees. That was their last two cards. And now they should just run away with this game in pretty quick fashion. What have they got in there? It's just going to be a Howling Mine, this Emery, for a bit. It's not like they're going to be bringing back threats, but Howling Mine, pretty good still. Our opponent draws some cards, and we draw a Swamp. Like, we do have some time, and Khan Silex is good in this matchup. Once they start... Oh, okay, another Ezra Saga. That's pretty bad for us. We do have those Wastelands we can draw. All right, are we just going to see the old Emery beat down, or are we just going to continue drawing cards? Yeah, they're going to continue drawing cards. I think that's correct as well. They have seen Orgish Bowmasters, but maybe they're just uh, not living in fear at all. Oh, we drew the Wasteland. Okay. We get to keep playing this game. Yep, just getting back the bauble. Our opponent's drawing two cards a turn, and we are not. I think the nature of our deck means that this position is going to be very hard to come back from without a big haymaker like the Khan or the Silex. Our opponent's nearly halfway through their deck. So what, 35 cards left in deck? Yikes. A Mishra's Factory. An oldie, but hopefully a goodie. It can stop the Emery if it doesn't have a Shadow Spear, but our opponent is not going to be using the Emery to attack with. They're just going to be drawing cards with it. Chalice for one. Okay. Khan, Silex, please. Yep, we're getting back the Bauble. Now, we can at least attack for two on this board at present. But if our opponent finds a Kappa Cannon here, the game's over very quickly. Look at this. 
All the bonus cards all the time. A Mishra's factory. Which one is the newly controlled one? That says newly controlled. This one doesn't. Okay. So we'll turn this into a guy. Good attacks. We will pump it using our other factory. And we'll get three damage in. We effectively have six power of blocks if that's a thing we require. But if our opponent's playing pretty much anything, it's going to be bigger than that, right? They can scale a patchwork rather quickly with the amount they're just shifting through their deck. They're just casting a Fairy Macabre. Well, if they've got a 1-2 and a 2-2, they can block our 3-3. Three, three, but I imagine they're just going to want... Okay, they're just going to put the Shadow Spear on the Fairy. That's fine. And then they can continue using their Emery to draw cards. Yeah, they've, basically, they've drawn twice as many cards as we have this game. Which is kind of the danger of what we're trying to do here. Now, a lot of their cards are just like redraws and zero drops and stuff. But Okay. So our factories are no good attacking right now. Our Urborg is no good in general. But we'll play it. We want to have less cards in our hand in case we draw like a Castle Locked Wing that we can start drawing cards with. We can make a 4-4 on blocks, but it doesn't fly. So it's going to be irrelevant if they attack. And then we can sort of trade chunks of four for chunks of three where they have lifelink. I think that favours them because they're taking one damage a turn and we're taking three. And at any point they can just drop one of their many creatures, like their patchworks, their gingers, which will have haste, or their cap cannoneer, which will just be the biggest thing going. Right, they're just playing another emery. They're just really shifting through their deck to try and find a creature. Some big haymaker. It's all they want. And until they have that, this is still technically a game. Yep, they're not going after the Liliana because they have that locked down with the Pith Needle and it actively helps them by being in play because they have Sir Ginger in their deck. I assume it's still in their deck. And Urza Saga. Look at that. A good Magic the Gathering card. Alright, let's get a guy. Let's get a guy. Let's go to attacks. So this is a quarter of our opponent's life total if we factor in the Fairy Macabre life gain. But like I said, it only takes one card from our opponent and this game is completely unwinnable for us. I guess we have the mana to do some silly card side deck stuff. Alright, a thought cast. If we'd have had an Orcish Bowmaster, we would have been in a much better spot. I'm just using this to mill four to try and find a threat. There is a Sir Ginger. That guy's pretty good on this board. There it is. It's going to end our meals. They did use the uh, Ancient Tomb for that, which is interesting. So this will make them sacrifice the Mox Opal, which will then grow their guy. So now it becomes better for them to move the Shadow Spear across using the Seatless Synod and either the Ancient Tomb as a Swamp or the Mox Opal. They left the card on top, which doesn't fill me with a great amount of joy either. Alright. So we've... Uh... <laughs> Liliana is so bad, it's helping our opponent's creatures. That's that's where Liliana is in 2024, apparently. How the mighty have fallen. An innocent blood that we can't cast due to the chalice. So we can make a guy. It won't be very big. I don't think we're winning this one. I don't want to play this one anymore. We put up the good fight, but our opponent just has way more cards. They've only got 16 cards left in their library. Uh, we've drawn like 16 cards and they've <laughs> that's all they got left. Yikes. All right, let's go to round two. All right, let's have a look at this opening hand for round two. Um, do you like Mistress Factory? Do I like it enough to keep this hand? I don't think so. I think we're going to send this one back. Um, Takanuma. Imagine if this was a swamp. Uh, we're keeping this hand and I guess we're going to throw back the lily and just have a bunch of cards that we can actually cast. I think we have to just throw out this Mistress Factory first because we don't want to get wastelanded off of black and we're running Takanuma instead of a Swamp, which is almost always an error in my experience playing Legacy. Not, I've never been happy to really see a Takanuma. But people like it. It does have some rather sweet art too, so... Okay, an Underground Sea for our opponent. Are we going to see... Ponder here, or are we some sort of Delver deck? Oh, we're going to see a Grief. Possibly reanimating this Grief in the near future. So they can take both of our hard removal spells. Now, Orcish Bowmasters can beat a Grief. 
Because you have two creatures, you block. Done. Right, it took one of our bow masters. If they reanimate, they might be getting the other one. But they've also seen that we don't have a swamp in our hand. Um, would I like to just waste sand our opponent straight up? Yes, yes I would. I think we need to try and cheese our opponent a little bit. We're playing uh, Pox, so we need to take our chances here and there. All right, so they're going to cycle for a creature, for, for a land off of this creature. That's fine. So if they reanimate, we can kill whatever they reanimate, provided they don't have a daze to back it up. Wait, they found a basic swamp, actually, didn't they? That was interesting. Feels like we're going to get our Black Source Wastelanded. That is what the world is telling me right now. I don't think we're going to send our Mistress Factory. I'd rather get this Bowmasters into play. And in Tomb, you say? Well, well, well. If it isn't horrors beyond our wildest comprehension. <laughs> okay, Atrexa. That's a pretty good creature. So they reanimate this. We Shoulders Edict it with the trigger on the stack. And we hope that that's good. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature, please. A daze. They're going to float, and then they're going to daze. All right, we'll see what cards you reveal and see how bad this is going to be for us. Do your worst opponent. Okay. Bunch of things. So they can entomb another monster in. Yeah, I don't think we're beating that. Let's, uh... No, let's just go to the next one. I don't think that's a realistic way for us to try and come back there. Um, I don't mind the ley lines here. We are pretty cold to some of that reanimate shenanigans. Opposition agent is fine, but not very exciting plague engineer for their bowmasters fine although we're not we're not bad against bowmasters we're not really drawing extra cards uh, i like lord skitter i want that to do something um force of despair i don't think is where i want to be it's a case of do i want this plague engineer so these are the things i'm considering what in our deck isn't useful smallpox feels pretty good here shoulders edict yep yeah, they got some big scary monsters fatal push like they can have things like Grief, which we can kill with a Fatal Push, provided we can get the Revolt, which is going to be difficult. They sometimes board into, like, Bowmasters, Dazzle Boy Walker, but like I said, I'd rather have this threat versus their Bowmasters, because we're not actually that bad against Bowmasters. I don't really like the Khan that much here. It, it's a thing that does stuff, right? Uh, which is a terrible description of anything. But four mana against their deck full of daisies and things like that, and, just, and Grief that can take this before it becomes relevant... I don't think I want to be in the Khan world. Do we want any of these in the main deck in that case? Like Torpor Orb, Tormoz Crypt, these are things we might be interested in. I think the, Torp the, the Tormoz Crypt is kind of interesting, but if they're going off of the graveyard plan, like we're already playing these Ley Lines, would I rather have Crypt or Ley Lines, actually? Because Crypt pumps our Constructs. I'd definitely rather have Crypt than one of the Ley Lines. Then we've still got three more cuts to find. I think Null Spell Bomb is obviously great. Current Seeker Verde is fine. Retrofitters. Thought Seas can do some work for us. Liliana is pretty reasonable here. This is a tough This is a tough one. Maybe we. Th that means we don't have room for the Plague Engineer and the Opposition Agent here. And then maybe we're just only playing three of these because we've got other Graveyard Hate. I can buy that. Okay, Jack. Be good to me. Um, we start with a ley line. We thought to use our opponent. We have this Liliana we can't cast. We do have a retrofitters, which is pretty good. So this ley line will... They're going to have some amount of their reanimate still in their deck, right? Whether that's just the reanimates. But they might not have in tombs and shenanigans like that. So this might not be as backbreaking as it is against like dedicated reanimated decks. But we're going to thoughts with our opponent now before they get to do any sort of dazed brainstorm stuff to hide their hand. Okay, so we've got a couple of Bowmasters and a Ponder. I'm going to take this Ponder. I think that's the best card here. How bad are we against Bowmasters is the question right now. We're not great against the old Bowmasters, truth be told, given our current setup. But we can't cast this Liliana, so it doesn't matter. They're going to be able to ping down some of our Retrofitters Foundries tokens. But if we time things well, we maybe get them waiting to get there. Bowmasters, like the perfect one, and we can just survive for a little bit. I don't know. This uh, guy reached Sanitarium against our opponent's double Bowmasters doesn't feel great. 
They left on top with their surveil land as well. So it's all coming up Millhouse over there. I will play good old fashioned Mishra's Factory. And we'll play this Retrofitter's Foundry. Got factories and foundries all over the shop. Right, there's that swamp. So our opponent's got an Orcish Bowmaster. So if we make a guy here, they will Bowmasters it. So we're hoping that by not making a guy... Uh, yeah, so this is the mana problems coming into the deck now a little bit. So we're hoping that by not making a guy in our turn, they might not play the Bowmaster and give us a little bit more wiggle room to breathe. But because they got a second one, maybe they're just going to Bowmasters and then Bowmasters again if we try and make a guy to block with. So we're probably incentivized to not block using our Retrofit's Foundry. But we can block using our Mishra's Factory. There is a Ponder. If they don't find a land, then they won't be able to play the Bowmasters here. We can obviously cycle for another land, but then that's going to be a mana neutral play and they're still going to be at one mana to operate with. So what is our hopes for this turn? Maybe we activate the Mistress Factory and block the Bowmaster. Oh, okay. Looks like we're not even going to get attacked here. If they're doing this, they can't really attack into the factory. Which is good. They could have something like a Snuff Out, I suppose. Alright. So we'll make a little servo here. Not the most impressive thing, but if they try and bowmaster this, we can then turn it into a Fopter. Which is also not the most impressive thing. So we have a Dark Ritual. What does that actually do for us right now? We can do a pretty unexciting Smallpox. Or we could Liliana and start stripping cards. Um, I'm going to go with the Liliana start stripping cards plan. All right, our opponent is just f 6 over there. All right, you can discard a card. Let's just take some bites out of crime. All right, Reanimate has entered the Exile Zone. So we technically have two blockers, but obviously Orcish Bowmasters can have things to say about that. Interesting timing-wise what they want to do here. Because we can just animate the Mistress Factory. Our opponent's got a Dark Ritual. Okay, they're more, more combo than I necessarily thought. That's interesting. There is a Grief. All right, you can take this card from our hand, which uh, isn't looking great right now. And then we can make some decisions. Would I like to get towards having a 4-4? Four -four? Does that sound like a thing I want? Or do I want more creatures? I think I want more creatures right now. Like they've got a menace creature. We don't really want to have to deal with that nonsense. Tormor's Crypt is not really the one, is it? We'll still play it out. It's not irrelevant. Alright, opponent. Lose another card. Is it your Bowmasters? Probably not. Okay, so they got one card in hand and it's Bowmasters. So now we can activate Mistress Factory and activate our Retrofitters for a 1-1. Or we can activate our Retrofitters for a 1-1 Flyer. So we've got some options available to us here. So this is probably attacking the Liliana. Is that where my problem lies here? All right, I think we animate this Mishra's Factory. Is that right? Um, so if we activate Retrofit's Foundry, we can definitely kill this Grief. That sounds like a thing I want to do here. Because we put them all under the bus on the Grief. And they might just not use their Bowmasters now. But we take this menace straight off the board, and which makes our 1-1s one just generally stronger because they can actually, you know, block and get in the way of these Bowmasters. It's just this uh, evasive threat that we really need to answer. Surprised they didn't attack with the Orc army. Like, they're not really protecting their life total from anything. I think trying to force through a little bit of extra damage would be helpful. It means they're threatening actual death on the Liliana instead of just losing some loyalty. But let's just make some guys here. We do have to put them all because I can just ping one if we don't. But all we're trying to do is get this grief off the board. Right. So we plus the Liliana to force the Bowmasters out of their hand. Which means it won't be pinging our 1-1. One -one. Yep. Might be pinging our Liliana though. We'll see. Yep, so pinged our Liliana. But now we can make a 1-1 one -one here. And we've also got our Mistress Factory which can block as a 3-3. Three -three. So we've kind of got the board more or less covered, but the top of their deck could be a bit of a scary one for us. 
Brainstorm. That's a pretty scary one. Three mana. A Doomsday. That was not in my uh, expected things to see out of our opponent there. Doomsday. That is an interesting one. So... Do we try and get them with Gaia Reach Sanitarium? That might be the level that we're working at. <laughs> All right, we get to see their deck, though, because there's definitely some funny business going on over there. This is like, you can chuck Scam into anything, and our opponent has chucked it into a Doomsday deck. Or they chuck Doomsday into a Scam deck. Depends how you want to look at it, and depends on what their 75 looks like. So we're very unlikely to be able to take them off of their mana to cast their win conditions, because that would require multiple pieces of land destruction at this point. All right, our opponent's finished. Let's see what's in their deck. Animate dead. Okay, so still pretty high on the gra the graveyard package, but it looks like they've gotten rid of the uh, entomb package in favor of doomsday. So how many doomsday? They've got one doomsday, two doomsday, three doomsday. Okay, so they got a full full set of doomsday going on here. I think. Uh, also, it means that this is probably just like a sideboard pivot. So the cards they're finding here, like there's no like other weird doomsday stuff in here. You know, there's no, like, consider and that sort of jazz. All right, let's see what our opponent wants to do here. I don't think they're attacking. I think they're just going to win via Doomsday. All right, let's make a 1-1. One, one. It's unlikely to be able to go the distance here. But maybe the text on Gaia Reach Sanitarium can somehow win us this game. That's a bit of a big if, isn't it? So our opponent doesn't have any cards in hand. If we force them to do another turn, we can at least try and ultimate the Liliana. We could try to draw a card with our Castle Lockthwain. But that's not going to do anything given what we have in our deck. So I think the plan here is maybe we get to Guy Reach Sanitarium or Liliana ult if our opponent has to go slowly. All right, they're cycling a Street Wraith. They're brainstorming. Okay. Two cards in library, one card in hand. All right. So now they play the oracle here or have they died to our guy reach sanitarium oh if they're not going now then i don't think they can win we kill them in their draw step with gaia reach sanitarium all right we're coming at liliana all right we will turn this into a guy this costs two to activate doesn't it all right, so we can go to blocks here. This can block here. This can block here. Go to damage. This can pump itself to survive. All right, so now we're in the end step. We can make another token. We could have just activated Guy Reach and activate Guy Reach again. That's probably fine too. Let's put our land. Plus this. Activate this. I probably have to discard the last card in their library. Yeah! Guy Reach Sanitarium getting a win. Color me surprised. Um, all right. I think I do want this opposition agent if our opponent's doing some of this. Uh, maybe the Silex is bad here, actually. Let's get rid of that and have this oppo agent. Maybe the Plague Engineer for Bowmasters is okay. It just doesn't fill me with any amount of joy. I think they're going to be more likely to go back on the reanimate plan after that didn't go well. Uh, to plan, although they only didn't go to plan because we had this random singleton in our deck, basically. Okay, let's just go like this. Uh, okay, we got the graveyard thing and we got the doomsday because Ultra Bowmaster is very good against doomsday. But our opponent's going to be like griefing and then fourth season and counter spelling and all the good stuff that you can do these days. All right, so let's play this. Let's get this currency converter on the go. So that makes their grease a lot worse. It also means that our smallpox, if we ever get a second black mana, is going to be a little bit better. A brainstorm from our opponent. All right. Getting in before we can play a Bowmasters. Sensible thing to do. There's a polluted delta. And nothing else from our opponent just yet. A dark ritual. I don't think this is how we want to spend our time with a dark ritual. I think we're going to play this saga. And we're going to try this Bowmasters. I don't think we want to do it now. So this is going to be a surveil land, I believe. 
Just get a little bit of extra value going then. See what they're putting into the exile zone. If anything, they're leaving it on top. Okay. Are we trying to catch them out with the Bowmasters? Now we have a currency converter as well, so we've got other options. And maybe we'll be in a situation where having the currency converter popping off is going to be more useful than putting Bowmasters down. Blue and blue. A petty theft on our ley line of the void. Interesting. Okay. I can live with that. A grief, you say? How do I feel about this grief? Like, we have the currency converter, so... This gives us a reasonable amount of value. What would you like to do, opponent? You've also got this as a saga ticking along. Which is pretty respectable. It took Bowmasters. We will put it under our converter. So we have a choice about whether or not we play the Bowmasters to try and pressure our opponent's life total, or we activate our currency converter to try and get a little deeper into our deck. It's an interesting call. Like our mana is going to be tied up from this point onwards anyway. So I think we want to use this as our final chance to like dig a little bit. And then we can just start unloading some cards here. Yikes. What do we want here? They're all pretty good. Maybe it's the ley line that goes here and the time has just gone for that. Alright. So now our mana is going to be funneled into this saga. And this can just poop out a couple of guys over a couple of turns. I us get his mistress factory going. And yeah. So we've got four power saved up on our converter. We've got an Urza saga that can pump out some little guys. We've got a factory that can do a little bit of damage. And then if we need to, we can pivot into, like, smallpox type stuff. Alright, brainstorm. We've also got the fetch land to do some more goodness with that. But we'll, we'll be putting out what? Uh, this will be four, one power, two power, three power, four power. Our saga will be attacking for four next turn alongside a guy. So we've suddenly, like, got an army out of nowhere. Which is pretty reasonable. Cycling a troll. Like, we have two answers for that if it's a thing we're worried about. This could be an animate dead, because that costs them a lot less life. So it's not so bad to just churn through what we've got going on. They're reanimating the grief. Alright, this is going to give us another creature. And our creatures are better than grief at this stage. Smallpox isn't really looking great to me right now. But Liliana taking the last few cards out of our opponent's hand is something I'm interested in. So I imagine this is probably what they would go. For, like that's probably what I would like, this is the thing I want the most here I would say alright they do not like the smallpox don't blame them many people will dislike smallpox alright so at the end step we can put a card we'll get rid of the smallpox we'll leave the orcs bowmasters because we don't want that to be a reanimation target for our opponent until we're better off just having a 2 turn in place that will be the last one that we play so we've got a thought seize here. So we can play Liliana and activate this as a saga if you want to here. That's interesting to me. Let's let's do that. All right. One. Two. Oh no, we need to activate this stuff, don't we? One, two. Let's get this. Do you want a Nile spell bomb to stop really scary stuff from happening? I think that's probably for the best. I think retrofit is fine here. But I'm more worried about them just having like a giant monster that we can't beat. And play this. Play this. Alright, we're doing the thing here. Goodbye opponent's things. We get to bash for six here. And then we have them dead next turn. When they have no available blockers. They can't do great graveyard stuff. Yeah. We might be putting a W on the board here. You've got to believe sometimes. GG. Yeah, I probably misplayed with the... Um, they played in a way that our guy reached Sanitarium could win us the game. I'm thankful for it. But uh, I don't necessarily think we're going to be winning that one if our opponent plays correctly. Because they would have had two games by then. Uh, but we'll take it. Playing weird cards, weird strategy sometimes gets people. We've got a win on the board, so I'm happy. Let's go to round three. Um, smallpox plus four mana spell. Not, not the best combo I've ever seen. Uh, we're on the draw. Are we supposed to mulligan to try and find something with a bit more oomph? Like a bit more speed? 
I think we do keep this though because four lands plus small plot pox is pretty reasonable. We can kind of mitigate the downside of that. We can discard our four drop to the small pox itself. Now, if small pox isn't good, then that sucks for us. But small pox is not the worst in the format right now because there's loads of people playing, you know, sort of mid rangey, almost temp like tempo slash mid rangey type things where you're going to be able to clean up a bunch of stuff with the small pox. Now, our opponent is not going to be one of those decks. Our opponent is just going to be doing the whole lands thing, possibly green white depths thing. Either way, that's going to suck big time for us. Um, let's have a look. An ensnaring bridge, you say? Well, we're protected from Marit Lage, at least. And this Khan the Great Creator can maybe sit behind this bridge. I don't think we're doing the smallpox plan. Seems irresponsible in the face of Life from Malone. Totally irresponsible. Alright, Life from Malone comes back again. There's the Poseidu. There's the Exploration. They're going to play another land. Yep. Our opponent certainly has mana. And a sphere. Okay. Smallpox looking even more irresponsible. Uh, perfect time to draw another one in that case. But we've got four mana to play the bridge. Maybe we can get to five mana. Play the Khan. Set up a Lattice lock. And win the game that way. That is my current plan of this game. Our opponent's got a wasteland. So that is an issue for us. We need to find more swamps. Dark Ritual. This is plus one mana. So if we play Urborg and we play Dark Ritual, this is one, two, three. We have three mana. This is plus one mana, four mana. We can play an Ensnaring Bridge or Liliana of the Veil. Now the problem is our opponent has this as a saga. But I think that means we just have to suck it up and try and get this instant bridge into play and hide behind this for a little bit. If we can find more mana, we can get our Liliana going and then that can empty our hand for us. So we're looking for another Dark Ritual. Right, the other option there is we play the Liliana first, which obviously comes with its own issues. Our opponent could just pit and needle that and that would be bad for us too. I don't know what to say. I'm not sure how we're supposed to win this one pre-board. Post-board, we get some tools from Graveyard Hate, that sort of jazz. Might help us. Oh, wow. An excellent draw. Now, I could be incredibly irresponsible and cast this smallpox. I'm not going to do that. I'm going to pass the turn, and then next turn we can play a Liliana of the Veil, and then that can eat one of their tokens or just start shredding our own hand. Well, both of our hands. But if our opponent's got another Besaju or a crop rotation, then they can obviously get rid of the Besaju with a crop rotation and the life from the limit back. Tabernacle at Pendrel Veil, that's not really what they want for this matchup. All right, let's see what horrors they have for us. So if they've got another Besaju, they can get an expedition map here, tutor for Besaju, blow up our bridge, and then we're just dead. So let's see what they get. So the lands has the ability Ooh, a pithy needle. So the lands deck has the ability to kind of do a similar thing what we're trying to do with our deck here. You know, the whole... Oh, they've named Khan. That's pretty smart. But yeah, they're, so they're trying to like deny our resources, just looping these wastelands, wrecking us, locking us under spheres, doing that sort of jazz. All right, they're wastelanding their own Besaju. Yep, and then they're going to life them the note back. We're done here. I don't think we're beating that. But we need some more tools. So, what tools do we want? What tools do we want? Leyline is potentially playable. Opposition Agent is very good. Um, like, the opposition, the, the Ley Lines will stop some of our opponent's problem things like Life from Malone recurring. That is a thing I am interested in stopping. The Khan Silex here is okay. It can clean up a bunch of tokens. That's what I'm about. The spell bomb's good here. Thought Seize feels pretty weak here. So let's have something more akin to this. We could play something like Plague Engineer, just as a like a guy. But I don't think that's really going to work for us. Um, Orcish Bowmaster is very bad as well. Yeah, what are we supposed to do here? I think we're just going to go in and see what we can manage here. Okay, we keep it. So Life of Alone doesn't work. We have a way of making threats. One of our lands does die to Wasteland, but, you know, 
That's the nature of things. At least it's not the Takanuma, so that's something I don't get to complain about. But it could be the Takanuma. That's one less swamp we have to draw in our deck. Okay. Here's Retrofit's Foundry. So we have a win condition. It's pretty slow. It's pretty bad against Tabernacle. But it's ours. Another swamp? No. Okay. We'll play this Castle Locked Way and we'll pass with Orcish Bowmasters and Retrofit's Foundry up. So the best case scenario for our Orcish Bowmasters is if our opponent makes a 1-1 one, one as a Saga at some point and we get to ping it down. Oh, is our opponent just going to do the classic 1-2-3? Um, so are we supposed to get this Retrofit's down or would I like to get this Bowmasters down right now? This is more power, so I think we're just going to go get some more power down. Two instead of one. This takes us further away from making the 4-4, though. I think this is probably better on the long run, anyway. All right, Swamp, lovely to see you. Again, we're going to hold up the Bowmasters. I'd rather save the Bowmasters for the potential of maybe blowing out a blocking construct or something. But we're now going to be making Retrofit's Foundry so that we can at least have a 1-1 Servo to block for a turn. All right, so there's their little friend... Or their little friend factory, I should say, because that's what that does. Alright, so we will make ourselves a Retrofit's Foundry. We'll go to our turn. We can attack and then turn this into a 1-1 one -one Servo. A Wasteland. That is a beautiful sight. But we're going to hold this up because our opponent could just crop rotate and get us here. We can turn this into a Flyer to block with when the time comes. By holding back with the Wasteland as well, we can sometimes get a Khan into play. But if our opponent taps down so they can't cast the two mana crop rotation because of Sphere, then we just get to Wasteland. So we put them in a bit of an awkward spot because they can't crop rotate unless they have more resources. And if they start activating this, then we just have the ability to Wasteland it. A Maze of Ith, is that a thing I care about? Hmm, good question. Uh, I would like to make a Thopter, please. So they have got, they can make a token here, and we can kill it with a Bowmaster, because it'll be a 2-2. Two -two. So we'll attack with the Orc and the army. We'll keep this back in case we get blasted by the scary friend. Why we get Bowmasters back? So we can go shields down on this wasteland right now. They can't crop rotate and kill us right now, so I think it's fine to play this it's Nair Bridge out. This makes their as a Sagas worse. It makes their Merit Lage unconnectable. Now, we've seen they already have things like Besager in their deck. So it's not like this is going to keep us alive forever. But we can peck away in the air with our Thopter token if we want to do that. We can Innocent Blood and then play a Bowmasters. If we can get this Khan, we can just try and lock our opponent out with a Khan. But the Urza Saga... Might just go and get them a... Alright, so they're making a copy of their saga here. Would I like to turn this Thopta into a 4-4? Or would I like to keep our 1-1 one -one in case something happens to our Incinerium Bridge? That is a really important question. Um, this is our only access to a flyer in our deck. I think we're going to allow them to Pithy Needle our Retrofitters. If they don't, and they Pithy Needle the Khan, then we get to keep our Retrofitters. But if they pit the needle of the retrofitters, we get to keep our Khan. So it's kind of okay for us. Now, they will have this um, as a Saga that can just keep making stuff, but that's what this Wasteland is for. I'm not necessarily convinced they should have been copying that with their Thespian stage. Here's a pit the needle. They could name the Wasteland here, actually, to stop us from doing that. That's interesting. No, they named Retrofitters Foundry. Okay. So they have a Wasteland, so they're going to Wasteland our Wasteland. The classic. Okay. We're going to attack with their 3-3. We'll take it if they do. They do not want to attack. I think that is correct. A Khan that we can't cast. That's exciting, isn't it? Um, what are we doing here? I find myself asking that a lot. Um, if we attack with this, that doesn't really work. We could just Innocent Blood force through one damage. That doesn't sound very exciting. Retrofitter's Foundry is off now. Um... Are oh, you just forcing through one damage? Mm. So we pack away the Thopter. That doesn't really do anything either because they're just going to tap their maze. 
All right, I think we're just going to sit back and just try and draw the mana to play this Khan and just lock the game up with the Khan before our opponent gets to... I guess the Expedition map is a real pain out of this Vespian stage. But if they just turn it into something else, then they won't have to worry about that. They're not, sorry, then I won't have to worry about them doing the Expedition. Okay. Exploration. That's going to allow them to play two lands this turn, so they could still activate this as a cycle. Yep, so they're going to make their... Oh, wow, okay. We don't really care about the Dark Depths while well, we've got the Ensnaring Bridge. But it's obviously not great for us. I will block here. And we'll cast our friend. So what this does is that if our opponent wants to save this as a Saga construct, they have to tap this Saga, which gives us an out to draw another Wasteland to take out their Saga. Sure. Okay. That's fine. This was We don't really care about this construct. We're just trying to bait out the activation of the Saga so we can Wasteland it. And we have to draw the Wasteland as well, but, you know, it's something... Crucible of Worlds. That will be good at some point, won't it? Um, our hand is really awkward, isn't it? I think we are going to cast this. We'll get rid of one of our Bowmasters. Or get rid of a Construct. Yeah, this sphere has just kept us just under the mana we've needed several times. Like, it's why they're playing their deck, obviously. It's a core component of lands these days, and it's very strong. It used to be like a cyborg card for lands. Like a long time ago, but now it's very much. Uh, I think the best main deck build of lands is with the Sphere of Resistance, like the green white list, which looks to be what our opponent's on because we saw the Savannah in game one. All right, so they are just making a 2020. And then they're going to get the Expedition map off of their Saga because that trigger goes on the stack first. So then they use that. Yep, they crack it for the Besaju. Blow up our Stain Bridge, and then we die. So that's not where we want to be. So, what helps us here? Hmm. Doesn't Urborg help us? That helps us a little bit. That gives us this Crucible of Worlds, which then makes us the Wasteland deck. But I think the time has gone for that. I think we're going to be a little bit slow here by about a turn, perhaps. So the expedition map has found Besaju. They're going to Besaju R and Stonebridge. We'll go and get ourselves a swamp. We will block with our Thopter token if they allow us. And then one, two, three, four, five, six mana is the most we can muster next turn. And Khan costs five. That's not the one, is it? Um, how are we getting rid of this? Merit Lage. If we can get rid of this construct somehow, maybe we get rid of the Merit Lage afterwards. But we can't do all of that in one turn. I don't know how our opponent loses this one. Uh, the only realistic way we have of ever winning this matchup, I think, is either getting like a weird crucible lock under like this ley line. But that time's already gone because they've got a lethal threat. Right, so they're giving us, do I want to be able to block this construct? Um, what does that actually do for us if we block the construct? Saves us a tiny bit of damage. Keeps our life total at 20. We don't have any life gain, so that's not going to be relevant. Hmm. But like, if we're casting some kind of edict effect anyway. Oh dear. There's a Caracas. Please bounce your own Merit Lage. That's, uh, that would help us out. Seems an unlikely thing to happen. Is our plan here. I guess if we kept the Bowmasters, then Gaia Reach Sanitarium is a thing where we get to ping. But then what does that ping actually achieve for us? Oh, I don't think we've got anything unless our opponent misclicks. When we, if we draw an Edict and our opponent misclicks, which one they want to sacrifice? A Dark Ritual. What have we seen here? Crop rotation. What is this? A wasteland. Do I care about that? I'm just going to skip this one. I think this matchup is borderline unwinnable. Like, the only way we can win is if we get, like, an early, like, crucible lock going before our opponent gets to set up one of their two threat cards. Or if we can just sit behind a bridge and get Khan to shut off their things. And that is 
unlikely to happen against the Wasteland Sphere of Resistance deck. If we had more Swamps in our deck, then that would be more realistic as an option. But even so, I don't think this matchup is particularly winnable. All right, let's go to round four. Thoughts of these Bowmasters on turn one. Like, it's a thing. We've got quite a bit of mana in our deck. Our deck contains 27 lands. We're on the draw, I believe. Ooh. Once upon a time, so we could be looking at Cradle Control, so we might be able to uh, kill something with our Bowmasters as well. That would be great. Smallpox is going to be reasonable. Oh, okay. We're on some kind of turbo e depth thing. All right, this is not what I wanted. To... We don't get to kill this. Another land, though. I'll take that. So I think the play here is Dark Ritual, Thoughts is our opponent, uh, Green Sun Zenith, and a Life of Malone. Well, bleh. Um, can't shut our opponents off green anyway. Each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature, please. We just have to get that out of the way. And what what are we doing against this life of lane? We just kind of have to sit there and wait for it to kill us. It's kind of how it feels. We do have a Nile spell bomb in our deck. I also want to draw that cool little Rat King guy. Where's that guy when he's at? I'll be honest with you, the main reason I wanted to play this deck is because I had that cool little rat lord in. Um, okay. Bowmaster's unlikely to be helpful. But if our opponent makes a Dark Depths, like playing around a Wasteland... Oh, God. I was going to say, if our opponent plays a Dark Depths around a Wasteland, maybe we get to um, just clean up stuff to the point where we take them off of colour as well. Taking off green is going to be difficult when we know they've got this savannah in hand. Right, our opponent's got a wasteland lock, and as we've discovered, our opponent's wasteland lock is going to be pretty good against us. An innocent blood. Uh, that doesn't do anything. And they're going to be dredging the life of the loam, and at some point, this life of the loam is going to find them a thespian stage. Oh, they didn't dredge. Interesting. Yeah, so at some point, they're going to find a thespian stage, or possibly an Ezra Saga. But it looks like they're more on green white depths. So they're less likely to have the saga. Or it might just be a one-of. So let's see what we can do about this. A thought sees. It's a spell we get to cast. I guess it lets us check and... Actually, no. If they can make the Dark Depths now, we'd like them to use it to block with. Because if they can crop rotate this into a Thespian stage, they can make a 2020. So we'd rather they do that and block than we thought sees. And then just be dead there's no reason if i were them to not take this if they can just make the 2020 right. and they're just gonna make it in response to our thought season we don't have a follow-up land so i think like they might not have it to be fair but they paused there for a while like they were thinking about it like why wouldn't you dredge the life from alone there you'd have to have drawn something better than life from alone okay just a plow that's fine it's gonna be two lands isn't it yeah um, okay. They're going to dredge life from the loam. They still didn't dredge life from the loam. That's really interesting to me. Why aren't you dredging life from the loam? If you find Thespian stage, you win the game. Best draw for us is probably the Dark Ritual. Like, I wouldn't mind a basic swamp either. That, that's fine. But Mistress Factory. Like, we're playing it. They Wasteland, we Bowmasters. All right. And it's not going great for us. All right, Bowmasters. Time to bash. There it goes. A powerful one damage. Oh, they drew an Endurance as well. Um, okay. They're going to remove our graveyard. They are. Okay. That's our threshold for Cabal Pit gone, I suppose. All right. Opponent's probably going to dredge life from the end this time just to get that wasteland back in their hand. No. Really not wanting to dredge the life from the loam. And they've been hitting like source to plowshares and endurance off the top, so uh, maybe they know something I don't. All right, there's the Snake on Forest. They can attack if they want to. And they're winning that race. They can hold back on blocks. And we can't attack into it. Yeah, they want to attack us. That is reasonable. They're probably drawing another endurance. A dark ritual. Okay, this is a card that I am happy to cast. 
let's cast this dark ritual. Cast this Liliana in the Veil. Let's say goodbye to their endurance. And let's bash for two points of damage. At any moment, we can just die to a crop rotation. So our opponent going to, oh, what is this? Slow removing the counter. Okay. You're going to dredge life alone this time? Uh, it's not something they're forgetting about because it does tell you in your draw step if you want to replace the draw. That's so wild to me, they're just not dredging here. What are they worried about? Oh, a basic swamp. Um, all right, I don't really want the smallpox against our opponent's life in the loan deck, so get out of here. They had life in the loan. Okay, that's why they're not dredging. Is that even a good enough reason to not dredge life in the loan? Like, they're not casting it. They're not... Like, you want to dredge it so you can find your other half of your combo. But now we're just forcing one damage through a turn, and maybe we get to Liliana, but we can't really do a particularly good pile because they have two green sources. We can't shut them off of life from the lane at any point. All right, that's a creature we can kill. Still wild to me they're not dredging. The best mechanic in the game, dredge. Okay. Uh, let's play Nair's Saga. That's good. That's going to take our opponent. That, they're probably going to dredge now. Um, let's get rid of this Reclaimer and our little friend. So we could have just cashed in our Liliana, but I'd rather just have... I'm not going to insult our opponent's intelligence and attack into this Maze of Ith. But, yeah, we could have just drained our Liliana instead of casting the... Um, Innocent blood there, but I'd rather keep our Liliana around because if we can build this up to six, that might actually do something. Okay, they finally dredged and they found the Thresman stage immediately. Okay, so if they just two mana rebuy the, the stage, play the stage, then that can kill us in a couple of turns. Yeah, they could have found this like four turns ago, I think, if they were dredging. Maybe not four, definitely three, though. Maybe four, actually, I suppose. So we just hard dredging but they play the Thespian stage they have three mana to make it they also have this maze of Ith to protect any sort of damage we can deal our Liliana can't do any instant speed sacking so we're basically looking for Shoulder's Edict if our opponent's playing really conservatively they're going to wasteland here but I think they should just try and win the game well I guess they don't know what's in our deck so maybe they're like a little bit spooked by some stuff we're just running through the list of things that we could have here I think Right, so I probably went for the Thespian stage. So they do have the lethal coming in. So we need Shoulders Edict here. Smallpox doesn't do it. I don't think we have any other cards in our deck to do it, actually. It's just the Edict. We haven't drawn one yet, though. Khan the Great Creator. It's not really the word, is it? I'm not going to insult our opponent's intelligence. I'm just going to move to the next game. They are just going to make their guy and kill us. So we're in a similar situation before, but our opponent's build has more creatures, so I want to snuff out for the Elvish Reclaimer. If they're on green-white depths, um, they might have Knight of the Reliquary as well. Um, we definitely want these Ley Lines for the reasons mentioned before. I don't really like Thoughtseize in this matchup. Uh, Fatal Push is actually reasonable here. Smallpox feels bad here, right? I think we just trim the smallpox. Like sometimes it can do some stuff and just say and just like completely end the game on the spot. I think a lot of the time it's just gonna actually I wouldn't mind having a pick on you. A lot of time it's just gonna be like, oh they've got life in the lane, we lose. I wish Bow Master is really bad. Alright, let's keep a smallpox in. Let's split it up. Maybe we're supposed to keep them all in and just try and cheese our opponent a little bit. What I want to see is Lord Skitter. If we don't get this guy into play, then I'm gonna have to play tribal or well, type all rats at some point on this uh, channel of mine. I'm so excited to see this guy. Look at his little face. Look how happy he is. So, what does this hand do? We can do some Urza Saga shenanigans. We're protected against Merit Lage. We've got a way of trying to find some more action. We're incredibly cold to Wasteland. I think we can't keep a hand that's cold to Wasteland. Um, this one is less cold to waste and answers the life from the loam. We can keep that 
probably need black black more than we need a mistress factory here so i think we will play out this nasty spell bomb it's kind of telegraphed obviously that we have it so our opponent can just try not to play into it but we don't know how long we're going to be able to keep any of our mana sources in this game so it's kind of on us to play some stuff out and get there with it windswept heat for our opponent a mox diamond all right you gonna see any more acceleration like an expiration or are we just gonna see like okay this is a thing we get to answer this is going to be the reclaimer we already have the snuff out so that's good a wasteland i don't think taking our opponent off savannah is good we'll just do this we will snuff out this little friend and we're holding up bow masters and nile spell one i think i'd rather save the wasteland for interfering in their combo or just taking out an opposing urza saga there's a wasteland from our opponent let's uh do we want to bow masters here we give up the card from the Nile Spell one for our opponent Wastelands here. All right, we'll do that. I don't. I think I'd rather get this card than I would get this Bowmaster into play because it's so low impact. If they wait, if they cast Life of Malayam, then a Sylvan Safekeeper. All right, Bowmasters looking good. Looking good, little Bowmasters. Retrofitters Foundry. Would you like to sacrifice a land? Like, it does stop us getting a token if they do, but it's obviously... Oh, no. A crop rotation. Is this going to be Sajiri Step? Flagstones. Yeah, that's pretty good. Do we want them to sacrifice as flagstones? I don't think we do. I think I'd just rather have a token here. Not that I'm expecting this token to do a great deal, but I think that's marginally better than just making them sacrifice the flagstones and just get a Savannah again. We don't have the mana now to draw a card from our Bowmasters. But we baited out a crop rotation from our opponent. Which is one crop rotation that isn't going towards making a Merit Lage or getting an Urza Saga crunching us. Oh, did they miss on land? That's very interesting. That is very interesting. Um, okay, I would like a Retrofit's Foundry. I would like this Wasteland. Not that Flagstones is a great Wasteland target. Though. But we can send in some clowns here. And then just start retrofitting. Retrofitting is that a word? Uh, we can start doing the retrofitters foundry until we win the game here. Right, so our opponent's got some spells in hand. They're not playing lands, so they've got some spells. What spells would they have? They wouldn't have spent at this point. So swords to plowshares. We haven't really given them a suitable target for swords to plowshares yet. So I wouldn't be surprised to see that in there. Hmm, this feels like bait, but I'm going to take it. I'll trade this. This only gives it Shroud. Right, we still have the the Spell Bomb here. What this does do is it means that our opponent doesn't have to worry about our Wasteland. But how are they going to kill us from here? All right, so they wow, the Swords to Plow shares in that just to get one damage tree. That seems pretty good for us. That's kind of wild, that play. An Airborg, not a great play. Do the same play as last time. These two herbals running away in our hand. We're only running three of them in the deck. We're not even the full four. All right, so they are playing Knight of the Reliquary, and that's the thing we have to deal with here. Understood. So we can shrink this at our leisure, but they can grow it at their leisure. So that's an interesting one. They currently don't have anything to sack for this guy. Am I just wasteanding them away here? I guess we can wait and see what we draw and see how we feel about it. It's the correct way to do that. A Mishra's Factory. So it's a land we actually get to cast. Been a hot minute. I think I will take out our opponent's green source. Like they obviously have the Mox Diamond as well. But it's just another land that we can strip out with our Null Spell Bomb when the time comes. Like they're probably going to sack this now with their Sylvan Safekeeper. Yeah. Sure. They can sacrifice their Flagstones to go and get a uh, Savannah, which will give the Knight something to sacrifice. Because this can only sacrifice plains or forests. Like, what would our opponent have in hand? They're not casting a life from the loam. Doesn't seem like a great thing to cast into our Nile Spellbomb, but that does give us a choice of do we stop them getting back the things right now, or do we stop the life from the loam? So we don't get to do both with uh, a Nile Spellbomb. 
All right. So if they attack, we can block with the servo, turn it into a, a flying friend. Or we can use Nar Spellworm to try and kill the knight. That also doesn't feel like an amazing thing to be doing. All right. I'm going to make another 1-1, one, one, I think. A swamp. All right. So we've got an ever-expanding army of terrible guys, but we can turn them into less terrible guys soon. But now the reliquary is active. All right. They didn't want to use it. What are those four cards you've got, opponent? So now we get to start making 1-1 one, one flyers. And the, the slow road to killing our opponent is on. We could turn this into a 4-4 four, four right now if we want to, actually. I don't hate that as a, as a plan. Because it could bait out our Null Spell Bomb. Land, don't hate that. Let's see if they want to do anything about our 4-4. Four, because four. we can strip all of these away. Our opponent can make this a 4-4, four, four, so it will trade. But well, the way to do this is to put the damage on it first and then crack the spell bomb afterwards. Because then there's there'll be a window where priority is checked and it'll be a 2-2 two -two that has taken four damage. So it will clean off the board. Whereas we could get into the weeds with like random like crop rotation chains and all sorts of nonsense. And I don't really want to be dealing with that right now. We just got a clean way of using this card that didn't actually cost us anything. Um, I will draw this extra card. Should have done this in the main phase. There's no saving your creature. At least we drew something that didn't matter. So we're not punished for our doing this in the end step. Alright. We can make a 4-4 if we want to. Alright, we've got some end step action here. A crop rotation. Sure. We're going to find here like a saga. So that's the savannah off of the flagstone. So now they can get a saga going, if that's what they're about. A thespian stage. My dark depth sense is tingling. All right, so we make another 1-1 one, one here. It means that next turn we can make two 1-1 one, one flyers. And that's more likely to keep us safe. Smallpox. Is this the one we want to cast right now? Interesting. I'm going to attack with some guys. That's smallpox. We've got some blank cards in hand. We can throw away an orc army. That's pretty disposable. We can sacrifice our Urborg in play to play out another one next turn. We should have tapped our mana differently if we're doing that, though. A Veil of Summer. So this will let them draw a card. And then this means we're pinging what exactly? Um, does it matter? No, that's that one. Should have floated off of the Urborg there as well. I think, I think I get rid of the orc here. Should we get rid of this airborg as well? Because we got another one in hand. Mox diamond. That's certainly a thing they could have had in hand. Okay, we could have done that a little bit cleaner. If we'd have tapped our airborg for that, then we'd have four mana up, which is enough to then make a four four. We don't have that ability right now. Force of vigor. All right. Let's get ourselves a 1-1 one, one flyer. That can block a big scary... Alright, ladies, well, our opponent's kind of uh, under the gun here. Like, we're going to be attacking for a decent amount. A Caracas, sure. We don't have the necessary tools to get through this. So, I'm not looking forward to seeing an endurance. I don't think I'm attacking with this Stopter. I don't believe black mana is important to our opponent. This also allows us to draw a card off of the castle locked away. We need a game. Our opponent's well. This game's been quite a long, slow one, but our opponent's thinking quite deliberately about a lot of stuff. I had to step away from the computer at one point, and I'm still ahead of time. All right, what are you going to find with your once upon a time? All right, that where somehow worked out for us. Uh, do we want any of these other tools now? I don't think so. Like we could bring in the Plague Engineer just to try and nail that little guy, but I don't think that's really worth doing. I think the Khan Silex is going to be better. It can also clean up uh, the Sagas and stuff. I feel worried about a bunch of tokens. But what, may I ask, do I have to do to draw Lord Skitter? Okay. 
Um, yeah, this is a sort of hand that could steal a game. We've got three basics to play off of. We've got Crucible and Smallpox, so we can kind of upset the apple cart that way. We've got the Liliana, we've got an answer for their Proclaimer if they start out on one. Yeah, I'm down to Clown. There it is. All right, Elvish Reclaimer. Time to die, Elvish Reclaimer. Excellent. We also have uh, an additional land to help us play that Crucible when the time comes. If our opponent's not playing anything, then we don't need to Smallpox. All right, so we can Liliana or Crucible next turn, depending on how the land sits at the time. We might be inclined to... Okay, so they're not just... Then it's not doing anything. Interesting. Okay, um, do I want any of these in play in particular? Not really. I think we just want this crucible up and running. Shut off any wasteland lines from our opponent. It'd be nice to get the immediate value, but if they want a two for one themselves with a force of vigor to blow this up, that's also fine for me right now. So play a guy, we can try and smallpox it, we can Liliana, discard a land, replay the land. Live the dream. Right, Big Lil, let's see what you can do for us. Let's this Castle Lock Thwain. Let's play this Castle Lock Thwain. And pass the turn. So they could be flashing in an Endurance here, but they could have done that last turn and didn't. So that's kind of interesting to me. It means that they maybe don't have anything. They could just be like, end of turn, once upon a timing, or whatever. They haven't been doing anything with their turns for since turn one. So clearly that Elvish Reclaimer was a big part of what they were trying to accomplish. A Dryad Arbor. They have a 1-1 one -one to pressurize our... To pressurize? To pressure our... Oh, this is going to be good, though. Smallpox, not really a fan of smallpox into the Flagstones. But it is what it is. An Elvish Reclaimer. Okay, we do get to nail all of these creatures. And take a card from our opponent's hand. Okay, so I think we begin with an Innocent Blood. They get rid of their dried arbor here. And then I think we follow up with smallpox. Um, I'll discard this Mishra's factory. They discarded a swords to plowshares. They're gonna probably gonna sacrifice their flagstones here. Yeah. So that's not amazing for us, but we're gonna have to work through it at some point. We'll play this Mistress Factory. And we'll plus this Liliana. Two cards left in our opponent's hand. Uh, we'll get rid of this Urborg, I think. It doesn't matter that much. I guess we might have concerns around an Endurance. So our opponent got rid of a Savannah there. So they got one card in hand, about to draw for turn. We lose to Thespian Stage or Crop Rotation here. I don't think it's either of those, because that makes that play quite easy. But our, our opponent is quite a sort of slow, deliberate player from... I've seen on this game, so they might just be thinking about every permutation as opposed to just being a bit of a clown like me sometimes, where I just am so worried about losing to the clock. All right, this is a creature that we can just kill with Liliana, or we can take the card out of their hand. Let's see what we're up to a wasteland. Okay, that makes me way more inclined to just minus this, right, and we can play out this wasteland. My opponent has one card in hand. So we could Wasteland right there, but I don't think that's necessary. We can just activate our Castle Lockthwain. And sort of carry on moving and some cards around. I think that's better than attacking here. Alright, that's the exact sort of card I wanted to see here. Right, let's let's plus this Liliana. Force of Vigor on our Crucible. Okay, um, I guess in that case we're probably pitching this Liliana first, because we don't have access to our lands anymore. Right, let's uh, get cracking. We could have drawn an extra card if we'd have tapped. Our guy reached Sanitarium for that one, couldn't we? It was foolish of me. I don't think we're wastelanding our opponent's Dark Depths right away. Don't really want to plus this Liliana in this current situation either, unless we draw something that's a bit blank. That's not blank, is it? That is significantly not blank. All right, let's get two damage in. We can draw an extra card, which we should have done last time. That gives us the ability to 
pitch some stuff to Liliana and keep this shoulders edict in hand. You can see here a crop rotation. Now this is not my first rodeo with the old dark depths, so I know the right timing for this. All right, we also have the backup of the shoulders edict. So we can force the action on our terms a little bit. A once upon a time. A wasteland. They have played the wasteland. So they have the ability to wasteland our wasteland, the classic. Prone has no cards in hand. Our life total is probably going to take hits in increments of 20 this game, if at all. Okay. Don't hate the smallpox, but would I rather have the Liliana ticking up? Right, so we, we're being allowed to have our Ezra Saga. That's quite interesting to me. Um, if we animate this, go tax. I think I'm just going to get rid of the smallpox here rather than the innocent blood. I kind of like the mana we have available to us right now. And I want to charge this up with more counters. So if I wasteland now, they can't use this to copy a basic land is the correct time to do this now because otherwise they can wasteland us so we wasteland this and they make it copy something all right so then we make a little friend here we know our opponent can't make a 2020 this turn so we'll just get our little as a saga going and then just bash with our factory and construct together that's four a turn we've got a shoulders edict take out their 2020 if it ever happens or if they play like a knight or something not that they can with the current mana situation they're under dark ritual that's not the one is it i would like to take my opponent's card before i attack they discard a legolas's quick reflexes so let's animate this and we'll go to tax the mistress factory being an artifact pumps our construct token so there's a three turn clock now Holding up our Shoulders Edict. If we draw another land, we can also draw some extra cards. All right, our opponent's had enough, and we put another W on the board. That was a, a difficult matchup. Uh, I'm not sure about the way our opponent necessarily played that in some of the games. But we managed to get there, which was a surprise to me. But I did say that we'd be able to like strip away some of their creatures, and they're way more creature-dependent than like lands, because lands doesn't really care about its creatures. So our removal was actually better here. So that puts us at two and two going into the final round. Two wins is about where you'd expect to, to sort of place with your average Pox League these days. So if we can get another win, uh, then we're doing good. So let's see if we can get that positive record. Oh, wow. It's Lord Skitter. I'm obliged to keep this hand because it's got the Rat King in and that's all I want to do today. All right. We are... On the play as well, so we get Currency Converter into Bowmaster, into possibly the Sewer King. So, uh, it's almost a real curve, I'll take it. Ooh, we're getting a Force of Will, pitching Force of Will on our Currency Converter. That strikes me as interesting. Possibly our opponent is aiming to grief us and doesn't want us to give, get extra value. A Dark Ritual, or we could power out... A Lord Skit. Or we could just hold up this Bowmasters, which I think is probably better. A Ponder. I will go for the Cheese here. Alright, we've got a Daze. That's fine. The Daze has not been pointed at our Lord Skitter. Or, potentially, our Khan the Great Creator. A little bit dubious about playing Liliana and plussing it, because our opponent might discard a giant monster and reanimate it. Okay, we're into Grixis Delver. That changes the ballpark significantly here. So we can use this Dark Ritual... Whoa. Okay, we have two choices here. We have the... Oh, Lord Skitter is not actually terrible here. It does die to Lightning Bolt, but we get to strip away the sorcery from our opponent. Is that better than playing Liliana here? What am I most scared of from our opponent? More creatures? Oh, we came here to cast Lord Skitter. Let's cast Lord Skitter. They can't bolt it right now, so we're at least going to be able to get a 1-1 and remove a card from their graveyard. So they've got a Force of Will. Sure, we've paid around days here, so we've done what we can. Alright, we're in. So this is the beginning of combat. It triggers. So we get a thing. We get to exile their sorcery. This does not have haste, though. It's just a 1-1 a one -one that can't block. But it is things that we can sack to smallpox. I'm so glad we've got to cast Lord Skitter. Molten Collapse. 
They fear the Lord Skitter. Right, they put a creature and a sorcery. So this is pretty close to popping now. I would like to find a land so we can try and Liliana. Why didn't they attack? Our creature can't block. And they're certainly not blocking. Okay, we didn't... I don't really want to play a smallpox into this thing. That feels pretty loose. Alright, let's play Retrofit's Foundry. Now that our opponent's Morton Collapse is gone, they might have two of them in their deck, but they're unlikely to have more than two. So, alright, no ponders or anything in their hand, otherwise you fire it off before. Alright, found a land. Am I playing in today? So what would they not cast from their hand? Um, okay. An Orcish Bowmasters, you say? How do I feel about Orcish Bowmasters? Not great, given we have a bunch of sacrifice removal. Alright, I think this puts us firmly in the uh, Retrofitters Foundry camp. For what we're doing with our turn. We also don't want to put spells on the stack that our opponent might be able to interact with and then get some surveils. Alright, there's a land. They now have a 3-3. That's going to be going some way towards beating us, I would imagine. But they can't really attack with their orcs. Unless they've got a second orc, Bowmasters. They do not have another Bowmasters. Otherwise you attack with... Elite. Okay, they might have another one then. If they're attacking with the army. Alright, we'll take this. That's... Very telegraphed here. So if we do this now and they kill it, then they don't hit us for this extra one point of damage by growing this. That's what the difference is there. An Orcish Bowmasters of our very own. I can live with that one. Okay. Oh, I wish our little Lord Skitters stuck around. I will be holding back our server token on blocks. So we can make it into a 1-1 one -one flyer. And we can also bowmasters and ping down their guy. That's two pretty useful things we get to attempt here. Just go to blocks and put this guy here. Is this just going to happen? It is. Okay, that's fine. So are we going to make a construct here or are we going to make a bowmasters? I think I'm going to make the bowmasters. Ping their bowmasters down. Not that we're really drawing extra cards, but... A stifle. Okay. Interesting. I'd very much like to have our Liliana do something. But feels a little ways off. A land here would be reasonable. Okay, we can just jam Liliana into Liliana. And see if that does anything. We are exposing ourselves to days, and Stifle can hit our activated abilities. We could always plus this. Yeah, I like plussing it here, actually. We can get rid of this Khan. That's, that's a later thing. We don't really want now. Right, they got rid of a Wasteland. That makes sense. We'll hold back on blocks. Because now they have a choice with their Dragon's Race Channel. Do they try and put some damage on this Liliana? And we can then soak up a bit of damage with it and maybe start activating our Retrofitters and sort of clawing our way back in. But our opponent's not going to really have any card advantage in their deck. Unless they're playing the four-colour build. I just come at Liliana. No, this is coming at us. This is coming at Liliana. So if we block here... No, that's not good. That's not a good play. Our Bowmasters is worth more than one point of... Loyalty on Liliana. Because they are a Brainstorm Ponder deck. What have you got for us? This feels like a Merktide region, I would imagine. Nope, just a Molten Collapse. So they're getting rid of two of our things here. That is a lot of things. Okay. Kind of wish I blocked now, but there you go. Okay. they got one card in hand. If it's a... So we can kind of just clean them out here, right? If we want to. So we can go, you lose a guy. And then if we smallpox here, they lose a bit of everything. I think we keep the removal spell rather than the Liliana because we can at least cast the removal spell. What do we get out of our hand? Out of their hand, another channeler. Okay, so we're kind of stable now. Our opponent's living off the top. We can answer a Merc Tide. We can answer a Dragon's Race Channeler. So I'd like to see a land here. Ideally a land that does something good. Um, okay, each opponent sacrifices a non-token creature. And I think it's worth upping this Liliana here. Because we don't know if we're going to be able to cast that other one. Delver of Secrets. Okay, so we can kill this with our Liliana. Mishra's Factory. Are we killing this and just losing the thing that we have? living off the top if this doesn't flip then we'll want to keep this around but 
if we just plus this, this flips, kills this, then we're kind of behind again. I think we do have to just... We've gotten a lot of value out of that Liliana. So now we have a threat. Our opponent's the first one to draw a card in this sort of pretty stalled board state. Okay, nothing there. It could just be a lightning bolt and they're going to kill our mistress factory. Let's find out. Classic gaming there. Mistress factory. Attacking for damages. Yeah. They've got their next creature answered. So I would actually like to see something like a Merktide as their next creature, to be perfectly honest. Because that's at least something we get to... Something big that shrinks other things like Dragon's Race Channel and future Merktides. We still play a little guy and we have to spend our innocent blood on like a Delver. That's a bit sad. So what can our opponent have that they're not casting? More lands. They could have like Stifles. They can have Counter Magic. Alright, let's just Mistress Factory our way to victory, hopefully. A Lightning Bolt. That'll kill our creature. But we have their next two creatures answered. Now, one of those will cost us our land, which is certainly not going to be a free thing for us to lose. Alright, so they're brainstorming, fetching, so their hand's going to be like a bunch of things they want now. But apparently not. Where's your threats? Where's our threats? Liliana of the Veil. Vale. Are they going to keep days at this stage of the game? I hope not. Am I plussing this? I think so. I think I'm going to get rid of the small pox. Just cranking this Liliana is going to be useful. They could just be stifling here. And that's fine. Then it's just a one-sided discard. And then lightning bolting the Liliana. Interesting. Orcish Bowmasters. Well, that's not great, is it? That's not great at all. So I discard a card here. Then we'll get rid of this small pox. Yeah, that was a pretty good selection of cards for our opponent to have there. Right, so we take a little bit of damage. We've got Innocent Blood that can take one of their guys. Innocent Blood's always going to kill your opponent's worst creature. So we might as well fire off here. I think our opponent's going to have us there. We need some better action. Thoughtseize is not the one, is it? Innocent Blood. Get rid of their Orc army taken. It could be the Bowmasters that goes... Just because we haven't shown any propensity for drawing cards here. Like, I guess they saw the currency converter. And by keeping two non-token creatures, they get more options with the Shoulders Edict. So this is going to put us to two. We cannot kill this, we die. <sighs> we put up a good fight there. Um, slightly different draws, I think we probably win that one. We're not a million miles away. I like Plague Engineer here. I like Snuff Out here. I dislike Thoughtseize. So what are we doing with our other cards? Are we like playing an opposition agent? It's just like a threat that can sometimes do some stuff. I don't really like it in this sort of matchup though. I don't like Khan very much in this matchup either, but I don't think we can board them out. Um, Force of Despair is a removal spell. Like Leyline has some interesting texts sometimes. Uh, we don't want a bunch of them, but if we have one... I can probably live with that. Um, Silex is good. Crucible is good. Our removal spells are good. Yeah, I think we're going to try it with... Uh, do I want two Ley Lines and no Force of Despair? All right, let's have two Ley Lines and no Force of Despair. We don't have, like, Grease and stuff to pitch our Ley Lines to. Obviously, we could have the Force of Despair to pitch to, but... Um, okay. Smallpox, Currency Converter. They're kind of friends. That's what we came here to do. And at least I did cast a little rat guy. Alright. Our opponent mulliganing is good for us. We need to try and... Like, this is definitely a game of attrition. Alright. Currency converter. We've got an engine. Sort of. You're going to play a guy and a threat. Like a land and a threat. That'd be nice. Okay. So the question is, are we playing around days? There's a ball ball from our opponent. Considering that Wasteland doesn't bother us because you've gone on the swamp, I think we can probably just play around the... The only, the only issue is, if we play and play around days here, and our opponent has a... Yeah, if our opponent's got a Bowmasters, then our small pops get so much worse. Hmm. Four cards in our opponent's hand. It's going to go up to five in a second. They didn't crack this yet, which kind of makes me think they might have a Delver in hand. So I think I am going to go for the small pox. Oh wow, it worked. Um, Gaia Reach Sanitarium is probably the weakest thing here. 
our hand. That gives us a treasure. Okay, our opponent discarded another channel. Okay. All right, so they didn't have a daze. I like what we've done here, but that's just sort of the first wave of things. All right, our opponent has another land. An Urborg. It's not really what we want to jam out. I guess we play the castle here. We can currency convert a now while our opponent can't bowmasters us. I like that. And get rid of this Urborg. This does leave us a little bit exposed for Molten Collapse on our currency converter if that's what happens. It just means that the... Alright, so it's not Molten Collapse. They could have a Meltdown here. But they won't be able to play it for as one so we should be able to at least crank a little bit of value out of our currency converter. I think not making that treasure is a mistake. That hopefully won't come back to bite us. Right, there is a flooded strand. We're going to see a little friend. We are going to see a little friend. He's a 3-3 three -three friend, so not the littlest of friends. Okay. Another Urborg. Um, do we fire in this Khan into a daze? They didn't have a daze before. They have Brainstorm now. Let's get some treasure. I guess we play the factory here. I think I'm going to jam the Khan into a daze. They didn't have daze before. And we've got these treasure tokens kicking around. So they're unlikely to have been, like, looking for a daze. I don't like this pause very much. Okay, they had a force. That's the sort of thing I would have expected them to have rather than a daze. And that's always going to catch one of our plays. Okay. So now we have the risk of Bowmasters if we try and activate our currency converter for the loot mode. Shouldred's Edict, you say. I do not hate that one. Let's give our opponent more black mana. Because our opponent can have Bowmasters, I want to keep the factory back to block with. Let's see if we can clean up this Chandler with a Shoulders Edict. We can. Painful Truths. Alright, in response, I would like to draw a card of my very own. Um, I would get rid of this Urborg. Painful Truth is one you don't see that often. It was all the rage when it first came out, but... Uh, Times have changed. So, let's play this Wasteland. Play this Liliana. Got Force over there, opponent. They do. Pitching a Daze. Understood. Do I want to try and take our opponent off of Red Mana? I think that's worth trying to do. Would I like to spend a Treasure to attack for two? I think that's also something I'd like to do. Like, what else are we using these Treasures for right now? Alright, in comes... Our factory, our opponent is at half their life total. Crucible of Worlds. If you know anything about me, you know that I love a Crucible of Worlds. What about now, opponent? What about now? I hope you like not having any lands. Alright, this is an Orcish Bowmasters, as expected. We can block with a Mishra's Factory here. Uh, if they miss a land drop, then we get to just take them out of lands altogether. How worried am I about Fatal Push? Not very, because we're the ones with all the with the Crucible and everything. Yeah. This is looking like the sort of game that I like to play. It's Wake Sand that's not showing this one in our hand. <laughs> Alright, Terraphone's had enough. Love you, Crucible of Worlds. Okay, so how do I feel about what we've got going on here? I think it's fine. There is still an argument for this opposition agent, but Never been a big fan of it into Delver. I think we're just going to go right back in again. Uh, we've got a little bit of removal. Maybe we can keep this. I am looking questionably on this Takanuma that I wish was a swamp though. So we have this Nile Spellbomb. So we can stop Merktide ruining our day. We've got Currency Converter. Okay, Delver of Secrets. That's a pretty good opener. So we kind of want to play something that's good enough that maybe it gets a days out of our opponent so our Shouldered Edict is more likely to resolve. So I think that thing is more likely going to be this Currency Converter because it did a lot of work for us in the last game. If they want to daze this, set themselves back a turn, that's fine. If they don't, then we start getting extra value when we're playing things. All right. Um, I don't know why they used their Bauble the way they did because they could have done the Bauble Delver trick where you crack it in your opponent's turn so you see the card on top so you get two chances of flipping. <clears throat> Excuse me. So... 
Bowmaster is the thing that our opponent is representing over there. I'll play this Takanuma. And when our opponent casts this Bowmasters in our end step, we will Shoulders Edict. Try and clear this Delver there. That can beat for three. This is pretty dazable if they have it. Okay. We got rid of their scariest threat. A Bowmaster is obviously a good card, and the fact that it provides multiple bodies is annoying for our Edict effects. But I think it's uh, less worrying than a three power flyer because we can always just go up the ground with some factories. And they're pretty good into the Bowmasters here. So I think our next turn is going to be play Mistress Factory, play Nile Spellbomb, and then hold up Spellbomb activation and the Mistress Factory. The only problem here is we can't get we don't get to draw a card with our Spellbomb. So we're probably going to make a small Merc Tide. Feels like they are. They're paying some costs. Yep. This is bad news for us. It's only a 4-4, but that's still a significant threat here. Okay, Orcish Bowmasters, though. That's a real card. Um, if we play it now, our opponent's less likely to be able to do anything about it. It basically has to be Force of Will or Bust. But if we do it on their turn, we're way more likely to be able to clean up this Merc Tide. So I think that's the play. We have to sort of... Are they going to attack into this Mistress Factory, actually? I don't think our opponent's going to attack into this Mistress Factory. I've changed my mind. Let's play this Bowmasters. Right, they got the Force of Will anyway, pitching a daze. We'll play a Spell Bomb. I don't really want to exile cards from our opponent's graveyard and pump their Merc Tide. But uh, who knows how this game transpires. Damnation wouldn't be the worst thing to play in this deck. It is four mana, though. All right. Our opponent's kind of running on empty over there, but... They are so far ahead on board. Don't think our opponent's attacking into the factory, but we're going to play it anyway. All right. So we need this Bowmasters to do some work for us. Just casting the Brazen Borrower. Um, do we do this now? I think we do this now. Let's get this gone. While well, we know we can definitely get it gone. Problem is, this Merc Tide. Oh, wow, they're attacking. That's really good news for us. Oh, wow. This is incredible news for us. Ah. Oh, boo earns. Another Bowmasters. Okay. Ping our friend down here. Alright. This Mistress Factory will become a 3 3. Blocks. Block here. This is. This can tap and activate itself, right? It doesn't say newly controlled. Oh. Okay, it is the newly controlled one, and I've just been jammed up by clicking the wrong one here, but it didn't say. Well, that's annoying, it won't let me activate this. That's something that the Magic Online interface could really do with upgrading, because we should be able to keep our thing there. All right. Dark Ritual, Liliana. What are we doing here? All right, so we're going we're gonna to Dark Ritual out our Liliana and minus it to kill one of their Bowmasters. This means we're not dead this turn, necessarily. I'm so annoyed about that factory play. Just wasn't clear which one was the, the right one there. All right. So just the Merc Tide comes in. A Brainstorm. If we activate our Nile Spell Bomb, it will grow this. We'll give them a ping, which gives them another body. No, we definitely can't do that. I was just wondering if there was a way that we could get an extra card that might help us out on the next turn, but I, just, I think the cost is too high. All right. A lightning bolt to our face. I guess we are dead. All right. Uh, we run that one pretty close. Um, I think we were so, so close to winning both of those games in a lot of ways. Like We just needed them to have one less important spell for us, and then we could maybe get there. But let's have a look how we finished in the end. Uh, so we finished with a 2-3, but two of the ones we lost were 1-2, so we weren't a million miles away from actually putting some decent numbers on the board there. So, what do I think about this deck? Well, obviously Pox, there's a reason people don't play Pox. It is not looking amazing into the format right now, but some of the elements are okay. Like, if we're trading removal and stuff like this, it's fine. The only problem is, 
If your opponent draws something reasonable off the top of their deck, the game can be over so quickly, and the quality of the cards that people are playing these days, you know, if we grind our opponent's resources down, they just go, oh, here's a Merc Tide I've drawn off the top. Then it's like, oh, okay, then I'm just dead, and I have so little time to find an answer to it. I think playing a four drop when we're trying to smallpox doesn't feel amazing. Obviously, Takanuma is a piece of rubbish you can get in the bin. This card is not a card that should be in legacy decks. Or maybe even any decks. It just does not feel like it achieves anything. We actively wanted a swamp instead of it. I think we don't do enough to break the parity of smallpox, which is a bit of an issue, I think. And there's so many low to the ground tempo decks that can kind of just ignore smallpox. So, okay, they lose a land, but, you know, they can cantrip into more. They can play really well off of one mana source, that sort of thing. And we really struggle to close the game. I think Lord Skitter looked pretty good. We, we played it once, but I definitely wanted it on a bunch of times. This feels like a good threat to play with smallpox because it always gives you stuff to do with it. And removing graveyards is so good in the format right now. So, I'm a big fan of this. Questions, why are we not playing four Bowmasters? It's, like... Arguably the best black card in Legacy. And it works quite well with our deck. We could easily be playing another one of these instead of a Thoughtseize or something. Obviously, we want the Thoughtseizes in the sort of combo matchups. The Khan was good one time when we were freezing out our opponent. Well, like, we did get a Mike's and Lattice win against the Artifact deck. So, you know, there is definitely some use to the Khan there. But it feels like we're going to be... If we're ever behind... We're having to go through a lot of hoops to sort of get back to parity. And we just fall behind again. So I think there's just not really a place for uh, the Pox decks among the top tables. Although it is fun and has a dedicated following of people. I've played Green Black Pox and I've enjoyed that more because of how good Life from the Loam is. I think Life from the Loam is kind of where you want to be with Pox. Because that really does make the small Pox a lot less uh, symmetrical. Now we do have Crucible of Worlds and the Currency Converter to kind of help that a little bit but that's not really enough when we're in situations where we're like, okay, we have to get rid of this because it doesn't do anything in this situation etc, etc. And Liliana is not quite what she used to be, but she had a pretty good outing today. She did a lot of stuff. We did kind of get blown out by our opponent having two spells they could cast in response to the plus. She is another check mark against Liliana as well as the fact that Orcish Bowmasters means Edict effects are worse. So maybe we need more ways of dealing with little creatures. Like, there's a lot of different ways you could take pox. You know, there's people who play like more artifact heavy pox. There's green black pox. There's pox decks that actually run pox even. But I think just the general strategy of trying to play these cards that are symmetrical and trying to make it less symmetrical by playing some other stuff or whatever, you either have to really, really make it less symmetrical or it's not good enough these days because... Your opponents are just playing really good cards that are just all upside. We've uh, we've come a long way in Magic the Gathering over the last like eight years or so where you can play just a bunch of really good cards that are similar power level to if you had a symmetrical card that you made one-sided. That That's kind of how good cards are these days. So trying to jump through hoops to do something that other people don't have to jump through hoops to doesn't feel like exactly where I would want to be. But I enjoy Legacy. I enjoy playing Pox in Legacy, even though I think it is not ideal. What I will say is I would very much like to play some more Lord Skitter. That's the main thing here. If I can try and find like a Typal Rat deck at some point, I will play that. If you've got one, by all means, send it to me. Uh, I, I have occasionally looked on Gatherer and Scryfall and stuff for good rats and... It's slim pickings over there for the poor little rats, but maybe there's some in the new set. Who knows? All right, I'm going to leave it there for today. This has been quite a long grindy one, as you can probably guess. So thank you very much for watching. Remember to like and subscribe, and goodbye. If you'd like to support me in the channel, please check out my Patreon. It has a free guide to budget turbo depths, as well as three tiers of support. A low-cost one that enters you into my monthly raffle for a free donation deck on the channel, a mid-tier subscription that gives you access to my detailed Turbo Depths guide that is updated every month as well as regular articles. And lastly, the higher tier gives you all of the above as well as a monthly donation deck for my channel. If you're interested in supporting the channel this way, please check out the link in the description.